Good morning. Good morning. If you want to be great, please stand up. All right, everybody in here wants to be great. That's that's absolutely wonderful. If you want to be great. So next thing I want to see, I want to see if you believe that you have the capacity and the ability to be great. Say, I am. I, I am. am. Wonderful. Now, so what we have now is a desire and an ability. Now, if we match that with the willingness to do what is necessary, we have what's called destiny. Willingness, or I'm sorry, desire, ability, and or willingness is the destiny to be greatness. So say, destined for greatness. Destined, destined for, for greatness. greatness. So all together we have, I am destined for greatness. Let's all say it. I am destined for greatness. Give yourselves a round of applause. Have a seat. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, the only person that you're destined to become is the person who you decide to be. Now, many of us are many things to this world. It is, is that by default? Is that destiny or is it on purpose? And if it's on purpose, whose purpose? There are a ton of things that define you. You're a kid, you're a student, you're a brother, you're a sister, you're a cousin, a niece, a nephew. Some of you adults, your moms, dads, parents in general, teachers, preachers, workers, Bosses, Mary, on Ashley Madison, I don't know, maybe divorce. But the point is, you're all these things by default. You're these things because your mom told you that's what you are. Your dad told you that's what you are. Your teacher told you that's what you are. Your boss told you that's what you are. Your, your employees told you that's what you are. You're just these things because that's what you've been told that's what you are. Society, even your past has told you what you are right now, who you are. But have you ever taken the time to say, I am this person because I decided to be? Am I being the person who I want to be? See, most adults will never achieve anything more than what they're doing right now. The average child will never really try to achieve their dreams because they are living within the limitations. I'll say that again. They're living within the limitations of the conversations, the opinions, and the expectations that somebody else has for them. Most of us have been told by someone who we love, who we care about, who we respect, who we admire, who, whose opinion we respect, we've been told the things that we can't do, and we believe them. Their opinion became our reality. I'll tell you a short story. When I was a teenager, 16, 17, 18 years old, late 80s, early 90s, the narrative around young black men where we were in endangered species. And in that, we were told that we were more likely to go to prison than go to college. We were told that we were more likely than any other group in the world to die before the age of 25. And we were told this by our parents, by our teachers, by our community leaders, by the people who we were told to respect and trust. And so that, that developed the image in our minds that we were destined for failure. And you know what we did? We lost hope, acted recklessly, and did things that failures do, which landed us in the graveyard and in the prisons, just as was predicted. See, it's a fact that you will only live up to your highest expectation of yourself. You will either live up to your highest expectations or down to your lowest expectations. We 
what you must do is define who you are and show up as that person in the, in the world. How many people in here have goals? Goals from the school year? If you have a goal of being the best student in, in your school, please stand up. Young man, what's your name? Russell. Russell. Good to meet you, Russell. So you say that you have a goal of being the best student in your, in your school, correct? That's true. So Russell, what I want you to say is, I am Russell. My name is Russell. I am the best student in the room, in my school. Say that for me. I am Russell, and I am the best student in my school. It's true now. Who is to say that it's not true? Russell, you can have a seat. Thank you. Well, you all can have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. Russell has now owned who he wants to be in this world. He has now determined what energy he is going to expend in order to make what he says true. If I ask you, sir, are you a male? Yes. What will change that? Absolutely nothing is the answer. If Russell says he's the best student in the world, as long as he believes that, nothing will change that. Correct? It makes sense to everybody? So you, you are more than just an actor in, in this movie that we call life. You are the writer and the director. So you must cast, write and cast yourself in the role of a hero in your own movie and breathe life into that character. Now, how many people want to know how to do that? Okay, well, good. I have the answer for you. What you're going to do, last year on Facebook, there was a ton of challenges. There was the ice bucket challenge. There was the uh, duck lips challenge. There was the cinnamon challenge. But today, I'm going to give you a challenge that's going to change your lives. It's going to change your lives. Are you excited about that? Yes. OK. So what we're going to do is the I am challenge. What I want you to do and you do it now, or you can wait until we're, we're finished here. But well, I want you to pick three words. Three words that you want to be used to describe who you are. Words, powerful words. Words like encouraging, inspiring, uh, courageous, enthusiastic. Words that you would use to describe a person that you admire. And choose those words for you. Because when you do that, just like with our friend Russell here, you start to believe that and you start to act upon that. You start to do, you enter into a contract, a spiritual, emotional, and physical contract with yourself that says, I am an enthusiastic person. I do enthusiastic things. And I get the things that enthusiastic people get. There are rewards for being inspiring. There are war, rewards for being courageous. And you all deserve that. You just have to believe it in your heart. Now, the second part to this is understanding and reintroducing yourself, how you under, understanding how you show up in the world. When you meet somebody, what are the words that they think about when they meet you for the first time? You don't want words like meek or timid, scared, rude, grumpy, moody, anything negative. You want to choose words that motivate people, that, that draw people into you, that make you the leader that they seek out in their lives. Russell, I'm going to use you again for an example. If you are the best student in the, in the school, how would you describe yourself? Let me help you out with that. The best student in the school studies longer than anyone else. The best student in school studies harder than anyone else. The best student in school is OK with asking questions. Those are the characteristics. So you're imaginative. You're dedicated. You're tenacious. So close your eyes and think about when that person meets you, what words do you want them to describe you as? Think about meeting yourself for the first time and saying, 
Boy, it sure was nice being in Russell. He was the most caring, genuine, inspiring person I've ever met in my life. And if you have trouble with that tonight, I want you to go home. After you get on your Twitter, after you get on your Facebook, after you get on all your social media, and you do the I am challenge, hashtag I am, and choose those three words, look in the mirror and say, hi, I am your name, and I am those three words that you've chosen, and it's a pleasure to meet you. Reintroduce yourself to yourself and mean it. Understand that the person that you're looking at in the mirror is the person who will accomplish whatever it is you decide. You are destined for greatness.